Unit 3, Module 1. Hello and welcome to the Module 1 of Unit 3 of Fashion Accessories and Trims. In this course that consists of 5 units, we will discuss in detail the scope of accessories in the fashion industry. This unit is all about the classification of fashion accessories based on how and why they are worn or carried. Fashion accessories that are worn on the head, hair, face and neck like hats, eyewear, hair accessories and ties will be discussed in this particular unit. In the module 1 of unit 3, the history, evolution of various styles of hats will be discussed. By the end of this unit, students will be able to explain the functions of headwear, list the categories of headwear, describe the differences between a hat and a cap, identify the various types of hats and caps that are worn by men and women. Headgear forms one of the oldest items of accessories worn by man. Whether it is to protect oneself from the heat and rain or to showcase one's power and status, headgear has played a big role throughout history. While traditionally men's hats have been used to maintain the distinction of status, Women's hats and headgears have been used to blur boundaries. Audrey Ebburn's hat in My Fair Lady is a great example of blurring boundaries. The custom of hat tipping as a means of expressing deference to a man's superiors reflected the importance of hat in marking class boundaries. While headgears such as turbans that is Mali and Ushnisha in ancient India have been worn since the Mauryan period, headgears such as pillows or sarkus were worn in Greece, while hoods, wimples and henins are the mark of European Middle Age costumes. Modern hats as we know now came into being during the 18th and 19th century AD. Now, let us take a look at the function of headgear. The primary function of headgear is protection from natural elements like sun's rays or the cold or rain. Hats in a socio-cultural perspective imply social status. They also identify the wearer's affiliation to a particular religion, community or group. Um, it can also be a mark of a profession. For instance, the hard hat that is worn by civil engineers and construction engineers point to their job status. Finally, hats are also a fashion symbol. They can complete a look or they can add to a look. Now that we have discussed or talked about the socio-cultural aspect of headgear, let us delve deep into symbolism. In the past, hats were considered sacred for they represented the connection between heaven and earth. The cylindrical felt cap called asike, worn by Sufi singers and dancers, that is the whirling dervishes, represent the tombstone that one day will rest over one's head. Dating back to the Byzantine Empire, the papal hat or the mitre is a symbol of Catholic authority. The crown of thorns placed on the head of Jesus Christ is a symbol of sufferance. The Sikh turban known as the Dastar symbolizes sovereignty, dedication self-respect, courage and piety to anyone who wears it. The feathered war bonnets of the native Indians need no introduction. The Indian chiefs 
earned each of their feathers by performing brave acts. Two, to respect the Islamite idea of modesty. Muslim women wear the hijab or the headscarf. Muslim women wear skull cap called kufi or thakia. Thus headgear as a symbol is not only rooted in religion. It is also a substantial part of the material culture of the people and their land, not only in India but all over the world. This module is about hats. But before we move on to study hats in detail, we must consider all the different types of headgears and their functions first. Categories of headgear Hats, caps, bonnets, fillets, crowns and tiaras, hoods, helmets, headscarves, and head covers. Now you might ask me what is the difference between a hat and a cap? A hat is a covering for the head that has a shaped crown and a brim. The size of the brim depends upon the type of the hat. Cloche, fedora, stovepipe and bowler are some examples of hats. On the other hand, a cap is soft, flat hat without a brim and typically has a peak or a visor in the front. Caps have crowns that fit very close to the head. A baseball cap or a Gatsy cap is a good example of cap in this context. The next category on the list of headgear is a bonnet. Bonnets are brimless head coverings made from soft material, usually with peaks of different sizes. In the 18th and 19th century Europe, bonnets were worn by women to protect hair and head from dust, from the sun's rays and even cold weather. In India, soft bonnets for babies in white cotton are very common. Blue bonnets and feather bonnets are owned by Scottish men. These look very very different from those that are worn by women. War bonnets are feathered headgear traditionally worn by male leaders of American Plains Indians. Only those who have earned the right and the honor to wear it may wear it. It is considered a great respect as they see it as an item of great spiritual and political importance. The third category is that of crowns, diadems, fillets and tiaras. Crowns as you know are symbolic headgear worn by royalty. Among other things it symbolizes nobility royalty and power to rule. Krita, Mukuta were crowns worn by Indian kings and queens since the ancient times. Made of gold, these were often studded with precious gemstones. A fillet or a circlet on the other hand is a simpler form of a crown. They would usually be worn by princes or princesses who are in waiting to become kings and queens. Derived from the ancient Greek diadem, which means to bind around, metal diadems were worn in ancient Greece and Rome. Golden diadems symbolized power. However, fillets and diadems made of natural materials held a lot of value too. The Greeks celebrated victory in games by crowning the champions with a wreath made of leaves, a practice that, is, that was continued in the Olympic Games. The Romans honored their victorious generals with wreaths made of real gold. Thus, they turned perishable foliage into the eternal gold rings. 
The Roman brides wore wreaths of lilies, wheat, rosemary and myrtle, symbolizing purity, fertility and male virility, which were then followed throughout centuries. Even today, many Christian brides wear floral wreaths or clips to keep their veils in place. South Indian brides even today wear poojare or poolajada that is braid of flowers on their head. In North India, grooms wear a headdress called sehra which is often decked with flowers. The association of flowers to an important milestone in life is something that binds many cultures together around the world. The next category that I'm going to discuss is the hood. Hoods are soft coverings for the head and are part of larger outfits like cloaks, capes, jackets and sweatsuits. They are not new and have been used since the medieval times. Then the extension of a hood called lyric pipe was also wrapped around the face to provide additional head covering. This might bring to your remembrance costumes of the beloved cartoon hero Robin Hood. Next, let us take a look at turbans, headscarves, wimples, head wraps and veils. They are all soft fabric coverings meant for the head and the face. Turbans consist of a single long piece of cloth that is wrapped around the head. The medieval wimples also come under this category. You can still see nuns at convents and churches wearing modern day wimples. Head wraps are pieces of fabric used to cover the head. They can be shawls, stoles, headscarves or kerchiefs. A veil on the other hand is a piece of sheer fabric that is used to cover the whole a part of the face. In some countries, the veil is not a sheer transparent fabric but an opaque fabric as in the case of burkas where only the eyes are covered by a translucent or a net fabric and the rest of the face is covered by an opaque fabric. The next category is that of helmet and visor. Helmets are hard hats that are made to protect head from injury. They are used in battle and also on construction sites. They are a part of uniform in some sports like hockey and cricket. And we are also required to wear them while driving bicycles and motorcycles. A visor is a hat or a headgear that generally has no crown and is fastened in the back using an adjustable velcro or a ribbon tie. You can see golfers wearing visors. The final category that I am going to discuss with you today is that of hair covers. Unlike all the other headgears, a hair cover is purely functional. Hair nets that are used to hold the hair in place and prevent it to, from getting into food are worn by chefs and people who work in the hospitality industry. Shower and swim caps where these caps prevent hair from getting wet also fall into the category of hair covers. With this we have done a roundup of different categories of headgear. We will now move on to discussing hats in detail. Hats. A hat, as we just saw, is a covering for the head that has a shaped crown and a brim. It can be both functional and decorative. It can be embellished using a variety of trims. A hat will most probably have a band in the center. And this would be at a place where the crown and the brim join together. Let us take a look at different parts of a hat. A hat typically has a crown, 
uh, it also has a brim there is a band or a tape or a ribbon at the place where the crown joins the brim now the crown can have peaks pinches and valleys depending on what sort of a hat it is a cap will have a peak or a visor that has been stiffened and this will be joined together to the soft crown portion without a band if you wear to go online to read about hats or if you want to pick up a good book on hats most often than not you will come across this term called millinery millinery is a term that is used to describe hat designing and hat making it is primarily used in the context of women's hats a milliner is a traditional hatter who designs makes and sells or even sometimes trims hats and even dresses milliners would in the past take old clothing and fabrics and remake them into new hats hats can aid us in expressing different aspects of our personality and mood they can be serious or playful casual or dressy reserved or flamboyant historically hats have served as symbols of social status each type has a unique history and exudes a style of its own let us take a quick look at the evolution of modern day hats from 16th century ad in the 16th century king henry 8 made flat white berets that were worn tilted very fashionable brimmed hats developed into quite flamboyant styles generally they were called beavers after the fur that was used for felting in england during the elizabethan era all men about the age of 6 had to wear a hat by law this coat edict was proclaimed in order to foster the hat trade in the 17th century the cavalier's beaver hat was the fashion must have for men in the 18th century bicorns and tricorns were very popular who can forget the famous hat of napoleon bonaparte from 1780 to 1790 huge hats were the focus for women who had moved on from towering hairstyles to towering hat decorations and then in the 1790s hats and hairstyles both shrank down close to the head and these hairstyles were derived from greek inspirations for most of 19th century bonnets were the headgear of choice for women men on the other hand wore tall stuff pipe hats to go along with their frock coats and trousers the 20th century saw hats such as the beret bowler homburg and panama in trend the women wore cloche pillbox and charlotte hats slowly the need and the scope of hats changed to the point of them becoming obsolete today hats are worn only for parties derbies and occasions like wedding other than that they are worn only for practical uses such as protection from the sun or rain now that we've looked into some fascinating parts of history of hats let us look at common types of hats and caps worn by both men and women let me see how many of them can you identify hats worn by men now let me tell you that this list is not exhaustive nor have the hats been listed in alphabetical order these are a set of hats that you must know to identify as a fashion or an accessory designer stylist or a fashion writer now the first hat is something
something that you might all be familiar with if you've ever watched the Godfather movie. Yes, the Homburg hat, also referred to as the gutter crown after the movie came out, is a classic hat that features a creased or a center den crown and a flared all around brim. The crown and the brim are separated by a handband. This is a formal hat that represents power. And as I mentioned before, it was made extremely famous by the movie Godfather. But do you know that it was worn by British Prime Minister Mr. Winston Churchill too? Top hat. When I think of top hats, I think of Mandrake the Magician, Uncle Sam and well Donald Duck. Though all of these are icons in their own rights, they are also comic characters. Made famous by the American president Abraham Lincoln, the stone pipe hat is a hat where the crown is straight all the way across. It is different from the flared style of a top hat. You can recognize the top hat from what the Mad Hatter is wearing in Alice in Wonderland. Dr. Seuss, Cat in the Hat, also wears a stovepipe hat. The next hat that many of you might easily recognize is the bowler hat. Also referred to as the derby, bowler hats were designed during the Industrial Revolution in Britain. They were used to protect gamekeepers from low-hanging branches while they were riding horseback. Charlie Chaplin added this to his unique ensemble and made the hat famous in his silent films in the 1920s. Fedora hat. This is a hat that is creased lengthwise down the crown and generally pinched in front of the crown on both sides. The brim goes all the way down the hat. It could be either contoured or a flexible front snap. And sometimes the hat band separates the brim and the crown. A fedora hat is worn in almost all formal occasions in Western countries. Talking about Western, the word Western in America has another meaning. It could refer to, yes, you got it right, cowboys. A Western hat or a cowboy hat is a defining piece of attire for farm or ranch workers in Western and Southern US, Canada and even Northern Mexico. On the same lines, you must have heard the word the Outback hat. The Outback is an Australian version of an American cowboy hat. Here, the brim is elongated and turned downward in the front and back. In the same vein, there is another hat called the Gaucho hat. A Gaucho or a South American cowboy hat is a one with a flat top and a flat brim featuring a chin cord that is associated with the Gaucho people of South America. Panama hat, again made famous by another American president, this time Theodore Roosevelt. A Panama hat is a straw hat with a flat brim and a band. If you have ever been in NCC or have had friends, then you would know what a beret is. A beret is a soft visorless cap with a close fitting headband and a wide round top, often with a tab in the center. A basque beret is a flat round headpiece usually woven in one section, fitted and featuring a leather sweatband. Military berets are one piece and flat on top with classic leather binding around the rim. A pork boy hat or a bebop hat could be slightly uncommon in India. A pork pie or a bebop has a telescope or an oval crown and a flat brim. 
originating in the 19th century. They are most commonly associated with jazz players. Moving back to history, fez hats. A red or a black fez hat in shape of a truncated crown with a tassel hanging from the center of the crown is of Turkish origin. It has also been associated with many religious and ethnic groups in the Ottoman Empire during the 19th century. Fez hats are worn during theatrical performances and even dance drama performances. Initially, we have discussed the difference between hats and caps. So now, let us take a look at the various caps that are worn by men, sometimes by women. First up on the list is a baseball cap. A baseball cap is a type of soft cap with a rounded crown and a stiff, stiff peak projecting in front. It is fastened at the back with an adjuster made of velcro, plastic or even elastic. It is one of the most commonly worn caps in India. Though it is a part of sportswear and often carries the logos of sporting teams, it is also the most commonly used promotional merchandise that is distributed by companies. This is because the crown on top allows for easy branding. Driver cap or IV cap is the next section of caps that we are going to discuss. A driver cap is a round cap with a small brim and a heightened peak in the back. Many driver caps or IV caps come in with button snaps or sewn buttons in the front brim and are sometimes referred to as Jeff cap, golf cap or flat caps. A pub cap or a duckbill cap is very similar to a driver cap, but the brim is folded inwards and for some similar to an old fashioned baseball cap. In the same category also comes the ascot cap. The ascot cap is a hard men's cap similar to an ivy cap style, but it's much sturdier and has a rounded shape. Deer stalker cap. This is a cap that resembles two baseball caps back to back with ear flaps coming down on the sides. The flaps can often be flipped up and tied at the peak of the crown. This hat is typically worn by hunters and hence the name. It was also made famous by the fictitious character of Sherlock Holmes. The eight quarter cap or a newsboy cap. A fully rounded cap with a small brim and with a body often divided into eight panels and a button top is the newsboy cap. These caps are also known by other names such as Baker Boy cap, Apple cap, eight panel cap or Gatsby cap. Jockey cap. Named after the traditional riding cap worn by jockeys on horses, this style resembles a baseball cap except that it has a very stingy brim. Beanie. If you are a contemporary youth in an urban society, you would know what a beanie is. It is a small rounded skull cap cut to fit the head. This in the past was associated with blue collar workers who needed something to keep their hair off their head when they were working. Another style of beanie is also hilariously called the whoopee cap. Now let's move on to hats worn by women. A cloche hat a cloche is a fitted, bell-shaped hat made popular in the 1920s. These look like cloches that are used to cover foot. Cloches
Bosch hats were designed to be worn down on the forehead with the wearer's eyes barely showing underneath the brim. Raffia hat A popular straw hat for women in summer because its flexibility allows for easy packing during travel. The women's raffia hats, the brim is more sloping compared to the men's hats and the brim is also wider. Now in India, compared to raffia or straw hats, polyester hats or acrylic hats made up of a mesh like material but in the same form are very common. These can be found in almost all tourist destinations. A Kentucky Derby hat. Hats have been worn in derbies for nearly 200 years. These take a spin on the classic women's big brim hat by adding a variety of adornments such as silk ribbons, feathers, flowers and more. In the same vein comes the dress hat and the boater hat. These two have wide brims that allow for a lot of embellishments such as lace, bows and flowers. Pillbox hat. This hat has a flat crown and has straight, upright sides and does not slope. Also, pillbox hats do not have brims. These are named after small cylindrical or hexagonal cases in which pills, that is medicines, used to be sold. Pillbox hats were made famous by Doris Day and Jackie Kennedy. They are a part of a lot of fashion shoots for they can be made in a variety of styles. You can also see stewardesses and hair hostess of different companies wearing pillbox hats as a part of their uniform. While some of these hats are worn by either men or women, some hats can be worn by both. Hats such as Panama hats, berets and caps such as baseball caps are general neutral and are commonly worn by both men and women. Even when it comes to other hats, there is no gender restriction. As long as it matches your ensemble, your occasion, your personality and the event in which you are going to wear it for, you can wear any type of hat. At the end of this module, I am going to be demonstrating how to make a pillbox hat with felt that is available in the market. I will also be showing you how to trim a store bought hat with flowers and laces. So this leads us to the discussion of what are the materials that are commonly used to make hats. Hats can be found in a plethora of materials. Hair, wool and fur is the biggest category. For instance, camel hair, Kashmir, merino wool and worsted wool felt along with fur trimmings have been used to make hats extensively. When it comes to fabrics, Harris tweed and corduroy are excellent choices. Fibers such as silk, lycra and polyester often make an appearance in modern day hats. Of course, the natural straw, raffia, bamboo and even paper must not be forgotten. Now that we have looked at the base of the hat, it is important to know how we can accessorize the hat. Yes, hats can be decorated or embellished using hat accessories. There are unlimited ways in which you can decorate your hats. You can use anything from fabric scraps to silk scarves and flower pins. You can use headbands and brooches. Accessories allow you to take your basic hat and create an infinite number of looks. This 
is something that I would be showing you in our tutorial demonstration. There is a category of headgear that we are yet to discuss. Something that is beloved by women of all ages. Yes, the fascinator. Let me give you a little bit of history about the fascinator. During the 18th and 19th century, a fascinator was a long head covering made of silk, lace or net. Or it could be made up of fine yarn and knitted or crocheted. Today, a fascinator is a small adornment for a head and it can be attached to a comb, a wire or a clip or a band and it perches on the top of the head. It has no brim, it has no crown. Sometimes a whale that is a half whale can be attached to your fascinator. At the end of this module, I am going to be demonstrating a fascinator made up of ribbons and a headband. Now that we have seen different categories of headgear and different types of hats, it is important to know how to buy a hat for yourself. Before you set out to order a hat, a beautiful fascinating hat online, you must know how to measure your head. To measure your head very quickly, you can use a tape measure or a piece of string that you have to hold against a ruler later to determine the length. Place the tape or the string and measure around your head about an eighth of an inch above your ear. You measure it across your mid forehead completely encircling your head. At this point also note whether the hat is supposed to be worn straight or tilted because in case of a tilted hat it needs to be slightly bigger. Hat sizes. Brands from different countries use different sizing. But on an average, small is usually about 55 cm, medium about 57 and large about 59 and XL is about 61 cm. These sizes can come extremely handy when you are ordering off international websites. So far in this module, we have looked at different categories of headwear, we moved on to types of hats and in between studied the history and evolution of hats. Now it's time for you to make your own hat. Yes, it is very much possible and you do not require a lot of construction skills. In this section of practical demonstration, I will demonstrate to you how you can make your own tilted pillbox hat using felt. I will also show you how you can create a fascinator using just a headband, a piece of felt, some ribbons and an artificial flower. And finally, I will also demonstrate how you can take an ordinary store-bought hat and convert it into something very beautiful by selecting and adding the right kind of trims. Through the course of these three tutorials, I will walk you through the various criteria that you have to keep in mind while picking and using these trims. It would be really helpful to you if you can link back to Unit 2 where we discussed sewing and decorative trims. Millennials of the past have often made hats, designer hats with their own hands without relying heavily on the use of machinery. Even today, a hat is one such accessory that you can make easily at home. It is a very good DIY project 
that you can whip up to add some extra flair and boomf to your ensembles. Now, I'm going to show you how you can make a very easy felt hat. Felt, as you might know, is a non-woven material. There are different kinds of felt available in the market. You do get the very good quality woolen felt, which is very soft. However, I am going to use a practice felt today that is slightly stiffer. An advantage of this is that it is much stronger and stiffer so that you do not have to enforce it with any type of interfacing. Also, the material is such that it provides a professional finish even when you are hand sewing. Yes, you heard it right. You do not need a sewing machine to make a hat. You can easily do it with hand sewing. The prerequisite for this tutorial is that you must know basic hand stitches like running stitch, chain stitch, blanket stitch and back stitch. Though we will only be using running stitch and back stitch majorly, depending on the finish that you are looking for, the kind of embellishments that you want to add, chain stitch and blanket stitch can also come in extremely handy. Now let me tell you the materials that are required to make this project. You require a sheet of felt which is available in the market for anywhere between 80 to 150 rupees. You get it in many different colors. I have chosen a Rani pink for this particular project. You also need tools such as shears, measuring tape, you require scale, a sketch pen or a marker or pencil, hand needle and matching color thread. You would also require different glues such as a rubber adhesive fevibon and a glue gun. You might ask me why is a glue required when we would be hand sewing? Yes, Though sewing is a permanent finish, we need something to hold the pieces together as we sew them. And it is easier to add the embellishments by gluing them. By using a glue such as hot glue on a base like felt, you also leave a possibility for the embellishment to be changed or replaced later on. Before we start this project, there are a few measurements that you must take. First, you must measure your hat size. Hat size, as we have seen in this unit, is measured by putting your measuring tape around your head about 2 mm at the point where your ear ends. And you take that measurement. And then you add a little extra to it. So I am going to be making my mark for about 21 and a half inches and I'm going to leave a half an inch extra. Now this if you notice unlike other fabrics used we are not leaving a very big sewing space or a seam allowance. This is because felt as a material is very stiff. Even if you leave a lot of extra allowance you are going to trim it at a later date. So you can calculate beforehand that you require only one fourth of an inch as your seam allowance and then mark it. Next comes the width of your hat. So how big do you want it to be? I have chosen a depth of two and a half inches. Now remember that out of these two and a half inches again a quarter inch will go as seam allowance. Now, the size or the depth depends upon the statement that you want to make with your hat. If you want to make 
a very 20s sort of a statement or a 30s sort of a statement. You can even go in for a depth of 3 inches or 4 inches. Now that is completely up to you. So once I make my mark, I'm going to be transferring it on to a piece of paper. Instead of using the typical pattern making sheet, I'm going to be using a slightly thicker chart paper. This will ensure that I'm able to transfer this quite well onto my felt. Once I do this, I'm going to cut my pattern out either with a cutter and scale or with my scissors. Now this is going to go around my head like this. Whatever length that you have here is going to give you the circumference of your head. Using the mathematical formula 2 pi r, you need to derive to find out your r. Now remember that I have taken this including my allowance. So when I do my calculation, I get my r as 3.5 inches. So using 3.5 inches as my radius, Going to be drawing a circle. So your semicircle and this rectangle, these are your two main pieces, pieces of the pattern. You also require two more main patterns in order to complete this hat. So once you have the strip you can use the same measurement. So if I've taken 22 inches here, I'll take another strip of 22 inches by 2.75 inches. So this would be my width. Along with that, so this is a kind of strip that I would cut. Along with that, I will also take another piece of felt. So I have taken this in a slightly lighter color. This is a piece of felt that is going to be used to join all the components together. So this is about 5.5 inches by 1.75 inches. Now, by now, you must have cut two pieces of pattern. One is your rectangle that is 22 inches long. Another one is a semicircle. Using this, you have to cut a strip of felt and a circle of felt. There are two more supplementary patterns that are required to complete this hat. You need to cut another rectangle of the same 22 inches by 2.75 inches. By now, you would have cut two pieces of pattern. One is a rectangular strip of 22 inches. The other one is a semicircle that you can use to cut your circle that fits the top of your head or the crown of your hat. Apart from this, you also require two more supplementary patterns. You need to cut a strip of felt, preferably the same color, 22 inches long by 1.75 inches. This will become a bow at the back or should you choose the front of your hat. Now, if you notice, we are going to be taking a rectangular strip of material, joining the ends to make a circular product. This means that there will be a seam or an edge. In order to finish that seam, we would be using another strip of felt. In this hat, purely for aesthetic reasons, 
I have chosen a piece of felt that is slightly lighter in color. So this is baby pink felt. This strip is about five and a half inches long by 1.75 inches wide. So now I have four pieces of the pattern. Two strips that are 22 inches long. One circle with a radius of 3.5. One piece of felt that is five and a half inches by 1.75 inches. Now let's start making our hat. You can use uh, the radius as your measurement and by using a compass you can make a circle. Alternatively, you can also find a ball or a plate that fits your head and use that to trace a circle. Another way which you can easily create a pattern for a circle is that by taking a sheet of paper, folding it down in half and marking your radius. Then when you cut your sector out of it and open, you get a perfect half circle. So keep this pattern as an unfold and trace it on your felt so that you get a circular pattern like this. Once you do so, mark in your elements inside by about quarter of an inches all around. Believe me, it might sound a little tricky at this point, but it is very, very easy as you begin to do it. Now, the next part is going to be the attachment of this band to my circle. So, how am I going to do it? Now, it has to be done in such a way that you mark the center of this band and the center of this circle. And then, keeping it in place like this, you sew it down with a back stitch. The first two, three stitches in the beginning might be difficult. But as you move on, it is going to conform to the shape very, very easily. So you take matching color thread and needle. Place it at the point where you are starting. Now, if you absolutely do not want to use glue at this stage, an easier way to keep both your pieces in place is to do a tacking stitch or a blanket stitch like this for the first two stitches so that it is in place joined together on you can merely concentrate on getting the shape right and the form right without having to worry about if the band is in the right fit or is it moving in the right direction with your circle. Now, if you do not want to do this with your thread, you can always put a dollop of glue and join them. Now, you go along the circumference, creating the join as you go. Please do back stitches so that the seam is much stronger. Do remember that you are sewing felt which is a thicker material which means that after a point your hands will start to ache and you might need a thimble to help your sewing along. So as I do this, you can see how I am turning the felt. Also, I am not trying to do very big stitches, but I am trying to do stitches that are probably half a centimeter big. You can do them even smaller, you will get a better finish. You will see that with this kind of a seam, you turn it around and crease. This is a sort of finish that you are looking at.
while felt is the easiest and my material of choice while making hats it's also possible to use the same technique with woven fabrics imagine you want to make a brocade cap then what can you do you can first fuse your fabric your brocade and make sure that you have a bit of an extra seam allowance then you can sew it using the same process but you have to be careful to make sure that you are not sewing the fusing but you are sewing only the fabric together now when you are using fabric which is a thin material the seam will also have to be reinforced this can be done using a bias binding bias binding tapes are available as we have discussed in our fashion trims and accessories unit if you want something fancy for the inside of your hat when you are using fabric you can also create a bias binding with a contrast fabric and use it even for hats such as this bias bindings are an interesting addition to the inside of the hat for a beginner i however recommend that you do a felt hat first as a practice before you move on to a fabric hat sometimes at certain turns you might have to go back and do one more seam so i've continued to hand sew and almost come to the end now my hat kind of looks like this it almost is like a cake tin so remember that this is the underside of the hat that is the hat part portion of the hat that goes inside if you can see over here i did not start in the edges like how you normally sew a product i started in the middle and went from the middle proceeded in both directions so now i have two pieces of thread left do not knot at this point i have left totally about 1.75 inches gap over here now i am going to turn this hat around please be patient here as you are turning it and as you turn you need to crease your hat the creasing is to make sure that all your hand sewing goes inside and it is not visible outside take your time press and do it very very slowly later if you are not happy with this finishing you can always do a decorative embroidery <clears throat> or a cording on top in some places the felt may refuse to turn there you need to apply a little pressure and crease it as you go now this is the kind of shape that you will get so you will get a product that looks like this the edges will be open this way now in order to finish my hat i need to first decide the kind of trimming that i'm going to do over here i have decided that i'm going to create a bow so i have taken the strip of felt that i have already cut i will fold it in half thereby marking my center so before i do that 
I would also keep check with my light colored felt to see if my center crease line matches. Again, at this point when you are joining, you can either use a little bit of glue or you can use a separate locking stitch or a tacking stitch to hold it in place. I am going to use very little glue on one of the lower layers, on the lower layer like this, very very little glue and I am going to press it together. Remember that this is not a permanent finish and it must be sewn. Whatever you do, make sure that this gap through which you can see my finger is left as a gap. Do not glue the shut at this point. So once I put my glue to tack and leave it in place, I will take my lighter color felt and I will pass it through this opening. And keep it like this. This is a portion that I'm going to glue very, very well. I'm going to take my glue gun. Always remember to leave the top quarter inch without glue. This is a portion that you would be sewing. So you glue it like this. This makes sure that your seam will not be visible. If you so desire, you can simply finish it off like this or take a piece of ribbon and trim it this way. Now I'm not going to stop there but I'm going to go ahead and add a bow. So in order to do that, I need to align the center of all my three layers, this quarter inch away from the seam where my center is, the center of this light pink color felt and the center of my dark pink color felt. So I will apply a little bit of glue only in the center and I will glue it down in place. Again, it is completely your decision whether you want to use glue or not. So now I have taken this bit of felt and I am going to fold. That is, I am going to loop it like this and bring it back to the center. Once I do that, I'm going to take my finger and press the middle of this bow so that I, cre I create a pleat folding like this. Let me repeat this for you once again. I'm going to take a piece of my felt, probably apply glue so that I can tack it in place. And glue it on like this. Do not press this flat. Do not crease this part. Okay. So if you want to be very sure of your measurements, probably you can go in about two and a half, three inches from the seam. And then fold so that you get a beautiful little pleat like this. Again, in order to hold it in place, all you need is a line of glue. Okay. 
be sure to also glue the lower layers. Be very very careful when you are working with the glue gun. It would be hot and it would burn your fingers. Now repeat the same technique on the other side. glue gun such as the one that I am using is a 240 volt glue gun and it is easily available in most craft supply stores in the market. When you are working with a glue gun make sure that you are sitting on a table or on a sturdy surface so that the glue gun does not fall on your lap or any other part of your body injuring you. So now can you see how the bow looks like? Now if you want you can leave it as it is or if you want more trimming you can also put a satin ribbon. What I have done here is that I have cut two pieces of satin ribbon, a baby pink ribbon and a rose pink ribbon and glued one on top of the other using a little bit of a rubber adhesive. Now I am going to glue this once again to my final piece of felt. Whenever you are using trim such as satin ribbon to finish your hat, make sure that it goes to the back also so that you get a very neat, very professional finish. Once this is done, let it dry, let it set for at least 5 minutes. You can turn your hat inside out, trim off your satin ribbon, don't leave them as it is, a good sign of a professional product is the finish that is there on the inside. So you can fold your satin ribbon like this and either sew it or glue it down. Now pick up the thread that has been going on either one of the sides and then thread your needle. So you thread your needle with one of the threads on the side and start sewing once again. Remember that this is going to be a little tough because you have to sew not two but four layers or that is actually if you include the satin ribbon five layers you continue to sew by making reinforcing stitches so that 
all four layers are finally tacked. Finally, you bring both the threads together, overlap the stitches and make your knots. This will make sure that even if your thread unravels, your stitches are not going to completely come apart. Your hat will not come apart and it will stay stronger for a longer period of time. So do a couple of more reinforcing running stitches. until you get to the side. You can also knot the thread for your running stitches through one of the back stitches and then pull it tight. Now it's time to cut all the excess thread that is there. Make sure your hat is clean and neat. Now this forms the underside of your hat. And this is going to, this is how it's going to look from all the different sides. Once again, turn it inside out. Just because it is made up of a single layer of felt and it is hand sewn, doesn't mean that it's not going to last you. If you take proper care of it, if you take good care of it it will definitely last for for definitely last enough to make a dozen appearances so once you turn it out you go back to the creases make sure you press it Make sure it's clean. Once you turn the hat around, this is how it is going to look like. You have to again go back and crease the edges so that all your hand sewing stitches are inside and they are not visible outside. You make sure that you remove any of your hot wax strings that you see. They might be hanging onto the bottom. So you remove all that and you clean up your hat. You might think that because you've made this hat by hand with a single layer of felt, it might not last for a very long time. It all depends upon how you preserve, how you use your products. Now, if you want to use this hat on an everyday basis, another thing that you can do is that you can edge the bottom layer with another ribbon. Now, this hat ribbon will make sure that your main hat remains clean. You can sew it or just glue it in order to reinforce it. Now, how do you wear this hat? This hat could be worn this way or with the bow that comes at the back. I hope you enjoyed making this hat tutorial. In this practical part of the video, I am going to show you how to make a fascinator. We have already seen what fascinators are. In this day and age, when a full flesh hat might seem a little obsolete, fascin fascinators are a great accessory to add that extra woomph. You can wear them to red carpet parties or Christian weddings. You can wear them at the derby. You can also wear them for a fun day out. In order to make a fascinator, here are the things that you would require. You would require a plastic or a metal hairband or a comb. You would also require some felt from which we would be cutting pieces out. Then you would require some fabric to trim it if you want a veil. You will also require accessories like flowers or you can use pearls or beads. And of course on the tools front, 
you will need your pair of trusty old shears you will need a marker you will need sewing needle and thread in a color that's matching to your felt you would also need an adhesive like feve bond or you could use your glue gun last but not the least you would also require your measuring tape now let us start with the project before you make a fascinator you have to make a base so fascinator base making is a number one step in a fascinator making process now you can use many different types of material to make your base in this project i am going to be using felt and a headband to make my base what is the first thing that i do once i get my plastic headband i am going to measure it i will measure it from end to end it's about 13 inches and i am going to cut a piece of felt that is of the same length now the width of this piece of felt should be slightly lesser that is 1 mm lesser than the width of the hairband this way your piece of felt fits perfectly to the hairband making it look very finished in the end so once we've cut our piece of felt we are going to apply a little feve bond on the wrong side of the felt where you have done your marking and then stick it onto the headband now feve bond or any rubber based adhesive is not a very fast drying glue so it takes time to dry but if you want your project to happen very very quickly then you can use your glue gun but i will not recommend using a glue gun at this particular stage in the project why because glue gun works by heating wax and leaving a strip of wax on to your material that strip is often three dimensional in nature so when you put it on a small surface like this you will see a pronounced line which we do not want at this stage now once you stick it just let it rest you can cut away the excess that is there clean your shears immediately so that there is no glue on it this is how your headband looks at the moment and it is properly finished keep it aside next i already pre-cut a circle of felt for this project my circle's diameter is 3.25 inches now how did i come upon this size this is completely based on the size of fascinator that you want and the size of the accessories that you are going to put on top of it sometimes you might want to put more accessories sometimes you might want to put less accessories so a material that you use for your fascinator base and the size determines what else is going to come on top of it when you are first beginning to make projects such as this it is always better to start with a slightly bigger size and then trim it down later this way if you run short of material or run short of space to put your decorative items it is not very difficult to alter so once i cut my piece of felt i fold it in half so that i am able to find the center now once i get to know the center i will just make a slit in one direction then i will overlap the slit making a slight cone such as this now how pronounced should this cone be if you're going to make your cone like this this is come going to come on your head this way and it's going to look very very weird so the overlap must be very less in this case i am doing an overlap of about 1 inch so that i get a very small slope how do i glue this once again i can use 
फेविबॉन्ड और आई कैन यूज ग्लूगन ओके सो आफ्टर मेकिंग अ स्लिट टू द सेंटर यू कैन यूज योर रबर एडेसिव लाइक फेविबॉन्ड टू अप्लाई ग्लू टू ओवरलैप and glue it down hold for a few seconds till the layers stick together with each other now once it is stuck it's time to adhere this cone to your headband base you have to check where you want this to be the best idea is to put it on and then to place it on your head and see if it looks right when you're making this for somebody else so you're making this on a production basis you can use a hat maker's dummy or you can use a mannequin head where the head is smooth without any curves or indentations of the hair on top of it so once this is done i am going to again apply glue on wherever the cone comes in contact with the headband just because you apply a lot of glue everywhere doesn't mean that your fascinator is going to remain strong when it comes to glue less is always more apply only what is required when and where is required this stage requires a little more pressing than the first two stages why because you have two layers of felt on one side and three layers of felt on the other side it is always a good idea to let your products that have been glued rest for 15 to 20 minutes before you attempt to put more things on top of it so i am going to set this aside to dry completely and i am going to get started on the next stage wherein i am going to attach a veil to this fascinator now veils come in many different sizes in many different categories veils in weddings are usually used to cover an entire face so the veil either goes below the face that is below the neck onto the chest or it is till the neck area Sometimes brides also wear fancy bride veils where the veil comes to the chin. There are different sizes of veils. There are some veils that are extremely long and that can come to your stomach or even your chest. Then there are those especially brides who like wearing veils that come to their neck or to their chest level. There are also brides who wear tilted veils or half face veils but if you are wearing it for a fun event like a party or a fashion show or a derby then there is not much point in covering your entire face in those cases you can choose to wear a fascinator that holds half a veil now what is so great about attaching a veil to a fascinator when you are wearing a veil separately you have to attach it to a comb and then put the comb into your hair but sometimes it can pull your hair and it can leave you with damaged hair in the end and then if you want to wear a clip on your head and then a veil then you'll have to wear two things at the same time in this case what i'm making you're going to get a you're going to get one fascinator with the veil that is attached to this but in this case we should also make some adjustments we cannot have a full face veil because the fascinator is going to come on one side at the hat so it is only going to be a half a face veil that comes till here almost like a diagonal so what are the kinds of fabrics that you can use for veils you can use tulle you can use different kinds of soft net or you can also use fabrics such as this which is a floral net these kind of fabrics are much more heavier than your regular twill 
Now, the next point comes. How much fabric do you require? In case of a full face well, you need to take at least 9 inches. So, 9 inches from here comes to here. This is considered to be a full face well. But what we are going to be doing, either 5 inches or 6 inches will be sufficient. Now, coming to the length. An ideal way to measure the veil fabric length is to measure half a circumference of your head. How big do you want the coverage? How much of your face do you want to be covered? Again, in this case, I said we are not going to cover the full face. So, we are going to cover only half the face, which means that we only want from here to here, which is around 7 to 8 inches. Now, it is always a good idea to leave a little extra. Okay. So, now let me go ahead and mark this on my fabric. So, I am going to be marking about 5 inches. Remember that the 5 inches is going to become even shorter in the end. And I am going to be taking about 7 inches plus 2 inches extra. This is for my gather. So, I am going to be taking about 9 inches. Then I am going to cut this piece of tulle out. Now, please remember that this is only one method of doing a veil. So, I am going to be, so I have cut a rectangular piece of fabric. I am going to be folding this fabric into two. And then folding the corners like this so that I get a right angle triangle. I will cut this triangle out. So now I am going to get a piece of fabric that looks like this. If you want to make any other cuts to straighten your fabric or if you want to give a fancy scalloped edge, this is the right time to do it. I prefer a straight edge to my veil. So, I am going to just straighten it a little bit and then leave it exactly like that. Now, I am going to knot a needle with matching color thread and then I am going to start gathering. I am going to have to stitch all the way through this trapezoid like end. Whenever you are starting to sew net, of course, start from the back, take the needle like this, but instead of pulling the knot all the way through, separate the thread separate the thread like this and then make the knot. Once again, take the knot back to the back. and push through. This makes sure that the thread is securely anchored to the fabric. Let me repeat the process once again. You take your knotted end through the back of the fabric and instead of pulling the knot all the way through, you bring the needle in between the two strands of thread and then pull it taut. Once again, you take the back, take the knot back to the back or the back side of the fabric and make a knot. Now that this is finely secured in place, 
I am going to start gathering. So once the yarn is firmly secured, you start gathering. Since it is an open work fabric, make sure that your gathering stitches are close by. So you do all the three sides and finally come to the end. Okay. you will get something like this which is a pouch. Now this pouch can be stretched out a little more so that, that you get a soft covering that you want. Remember that this is only for the side of your face from here to here. Now at this stage it is a very good idea to go back your headband and to check whether the size is as per your requirement. If you need to make any corrections such as gathering it tighter or looser, you need to do it at this stage. So I can see that what I have done is as per my requirement. Now if I require more or less I would do the gathers in such a way. Okay. So once I am done with the length that I want, I would gradually make sure that my gathers are in place. not once again and cut the excess thread. So your pouch like veil is done now. So now I am going to start by attaching my veil to my headband like this. You can either sew it or you can also glue it by using dollops of glue. You don't have to use very, uh, you don't have to use a lot of glue, but very, very little glue, particularly if you are using the glue gun.
See, doesn't this give a very dainty feeling to your project? Okay. Now comes the fun part. You can trim and accessorize this however you want. So I have some moire ribbons here that I showed to you in the fashion trims unit. So I'm going to use some of this ribbon and randomly, very organically fold it in such a way and place it. Now this is to give a very ethereal feeling to the whole headband. The easiest way to do this is by using the glue gun application. Be careful though, this glue is very very hot and you can burn your fingers if you are not careful. In case you are very scared of the glue gun, you can also use another object such as a pen in order to place your ribbons. There's just one more issue with the glue gun. It is very very stringy, so which reduces the final quality of your work. Always remember to remove the strings as and when you glue them. So like this, you can continue to trim your hat any way you want. So you can continue to attach your ribbons and uh, if you want to be more uh, safer, secure, more professional in your finish, you can also take a sewing thread and a needle and sew them as you go. Now please note that I am only sewing the ribbon to the other ribbon. I am not sewing it to the fascinator base. For that attachment, I am using little dollops of glue. So once I do it like this, I like to work with ribbons from their packaging so that one, I don't waste them. Secondly, I can take as much as I want without having to fear that I'm going to run out of them in the middle of my project. But if you are buying ribbon in meters, you can first take an ordinary twill tape, uh, something that you can use for your petticoats or a satin tape and then loosely make a bow and see how much you would want. And then go ahead and purchase the same quality, uh, same quantity of a good quality ribbon. Don't worry about the finishing that is there on the top side. Just think only about the finishing that is there on the bottom side. Because the top side of this is going to get covered in a couple of minutes. So once you are done with your ribbon flower, make a knot and cut it off. You can either leave extended pieces of ribbon at the back or if you do not like that, you can fold and make a cross cut that is much closer to your ribbon. So now you have your small fascinator with a lace and a satin ribbon covering. Now I would like you to take a look at the back side and see how neat it is. A good mark of a designer product, be it apparel or accessory, is the kind of finishing that is there on the underside. Everybody think that only the front of the garment or the front of the accessory has to look good and the back can be messy. But a true design professional knows that the back or the inside part of the product is as important as the outside. Now we are going to go ahead and trim it a little more. So I'm going to be using an artificial flower. These flowers are available in gift shops or they are also available by the packets. Now they would be domed. For this project to work, you need to take the flower apart like this. Take out petal by petal. 
so that you remove all the plastic components that is there. And once you have done that, you have to glue it back together. Just use again dollops of glue, very, very little glue. And then fluff them up and put them back together. While you do this, you also ensure that your flower is fluffed up, is facing the right direction and it has the necessary kind of blooming that you require. If you require more petals, you can always add more petals at this stage. Once you glue it together completely, and it dries. Shake it off and see if any of the petals are coming apart. Some of it would have gotten loose. In that case, glue it once again. This is to make sure that your product is beautifully finished and it is very strong and it does not come apart when you're walking down the street or having a ball dancing at a party. The final step is to put your flower on top of the ribbons. Now if you want you can also trim the flower a little more. I'm going to use a mother of pearl bead to do the center of the flower. Now you might again ask okay the center is going inside the flower like this and nobody might see it when I'm wearing. But again, my dear friends, a mark of a designer product is that you provide a lot of additional value at the point of sale. And when a customer picks up a product to wear it. Now, when you are your own client, you have to make sure that it pleases not just your performance feature that is required but it pleases you aesthetically when you are even picking up a product looking at it right before you wear it. I am going to let this rest for another 5 to 10 minutes and then your beautiful fascinator would be ready to wear and enjoy. Now, let's consider this hat and look at the different parts of a hat. A hat can be made up of many different materials and can come in many different sh shapes and sizes. This particular hat, for instance, is made up of fabric and it has got a lining inside. This is a polyester lining. Now, in this hat, this part is called the brim. This is called the band. This part is called the crown as it goes on the top of your head. Now, you must have seen hats where there is no seam here at this point. But they would have a crease that goes inside or they would have a pinch where it's pinched together like this at the top. This particular hat, however, has a seam here. If I turn this inside out, there is a tape that goes along the circumference of this hat. Have you ever wondered why this tape is present? Now, this tape is not only there to finish the, fab, the hat, but it also helps you keep the hat clean. When you wear the hat, the, the band is going to protect your hat from the sweat and dirt that is there in this particular line. Now this tape is removable. If it gets very dirty, you can remove it and then replace it with another tape. In this section, I am going to talk about trimming an ordinary store bought hat. Now, these kind of hats you would have seen everywhere in supermarkets, in 
multi branded outlet stores even in fashion shops in almost all cities in india now how do i make this hat more feminine more pretty in places where other hats are not available the process of adding trims and accessories to the hat to make it extravagant is called trimming of the hat trimming of the hat can be done using various hat accessories these include brooches clips clip-ons floral patches laces tapes ribbons pollens feathers net and other kinds of fabric since this is a very basic tutorial i am going to help you embellish this hat quickly within a matter of minutes first i am going to turn this brim downwards so that it looks like this then secondly i am going to glue a piece of lace ribbon so that it completely hides this black strip i'm going to take my glue gun and apply dollops of glue to my hat and i am going to place my ribbon in such a way that i am going to cover the entire black strip be extremely careful with your glue gun it will be very hot and the hot wax can burn your fingers now remember that your tape will be in straight grain and you are gluing along a circular or a three dimensional surface you are bound to get gaps and you are bound to get ruches don't worry we can come back and fix this at this point our aim is to only cover the layer of black tape with the ribbon that we have when we come to the end cut off the ribbon can you see that the hat already looks a little better now you can either leave it as it is or you can add another layer of tape on top now let us see if that works at this point now you don't even have to cover the entire hat that is exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to cover only one section of the hat Now when you're trimming a hat there are a few questions that you have to ask yourself what kind of an event am i going to wear it for second is it going to be during the day or is it going to be an evening affair then what is the outfit that i'm going to pair it with of course as a person who believes in gender fluidity and cross gender dressing i do not wish to say that a particular kind of hat can be worn only by a particular gender but it depends on who you are what your personality is what that event is what is the social status quo surrounding the event and most definitely can you pull it off in the fashion field it depends more on your personality and the ability to carry out an outfit to showcase the fashion trends rather than being bound by it if you are able to let your natural personality shine through and along with it rock your own song there is nothing like it 
you can wear anything that is extremely fashionable to that extent even avant-garde now again in the end i'm going to go back and trim the place where the laces meet each other you can now see that i have trimmed the hat to this extent again once you have finished gluing something with a glue gun make sure you go around and collect all the stringers stringers such as this that is wax stringers make your products look extremely untidy and do not give a professional finish if you so wish you can always go back with a small tube of fabric glue and glue these items in place without the fear of additional stringers coming into existence so now i have used two layers that is two levels of different kinds of lace now i'm going to add flowers to it so i'm going to now change the way this hat is worn this hat as it was made was meant to be worn like this now i'm going to change this slightly so that the hat can be either worn like this or like this in order to do that i have to change the focal point of this hat so i fold up one edge of the brim and this is basically at the back side see and using my needle and thread i can do a row of concealed stitches i will use my needle and thread like this and then sew it in place now you might ask me why not glue this as well now i'm looking for additional functionality here that is not going to be achieved by simply gluing it in place it also has to be sewn so that this product becomes permanent and this trimming is not a temporary feature however should you so wish to remove it in the future the hand stitching can easily be removed remember that only running stitches will not work here you need to hem that is blind hem this turn in place once it is sewn please take the thread to another part of the hat and then cut the thread knot it and then cut the thread cut any extra threads that are hanging so now you can see that this hat has been folded and sewn in this way now it's time to further embellish the hat or trim the hat i am going to trim this hat using this large flower that i bought at the market first i need to make this flare flower flat so in order to do that i am going to be removing all the plastic components that give the flower its dome shape in order to do so i will separate the petals remove the plastic cup inside and from in between the layers and then glue all the layers back together Now 
once again remember to remove all these strings of wax before you put the flower on the hat check for stability make sure that none of the petals are coming loose in case they are apply additional dots of glue and make sure that they are nice and firm give it a little shake to make sure give it a little shake to make sure nothing is falling out now comes the fun part that is gluing your flower to your hat now notice something here i am not gluing the flower directly onto the hat but i am only gluing it to the lace tapes that i have already attached this way i can easily swap out the flowers or the embellishments or trims as and when i like without actually disturbing the integrity of the hat now it's time to make the hat even more fancy this can be done by adding some center to the flower you can either use pearl beads or you can use stones such as this in order to make it more glamorous for this particular hat i'm going to be using a selection of pearl beads so just apply a good amount of glue gun the wax and then start by placing the beads however you require it you don't have to plan this it can be very organic and free flowing in order to get a very natural feeling you can also add stone brooches pearl brooches clips that you have any parts of old earrings any broken rings all those items can be repurposed to become floral centers for your hat i am going to let it be as it is right now you can also add more ribbons feathers more flowers and any other trims that you wish to this hat to make it even more feminine or even more grander you can create your own hat such as this by trimming them with beautiful pieces of laces and flowers in order to suit your clothes instead of going with very feminine looking items like flowers you can also go for other embellishments like for instance skulls or snakes or other kinds of reptiles when you're dressing up for a halloween theme party these can also be great additions to our cosplay event or any kind of theme party now let me put it on and show you how it is supposed to be worn now hats such as this are not supposed to be worn straight but supposed to be worn slightly tilted so that you can also see the beautiful embellishment that is there notice that as i'm tilting the hat i am also tilting it slightly towards my back so that the folded and sewn part goes behind my ear and that the flower is seen in the front i hope you would have found this practical tutorial useful and i'm looking forward to see the kind of hats that you're going to make with this